Welcome to We Make Change, the tiny house build. Today we're looking at making custom made axles for your trailer or tiny house trailer. This is part 3 in a multi part video series for building a tiny house trailer. Check out the other videos in the series. So you've got two methods to get an axle on your trailer. The first one is to buy a pre-made axle all ready to go and the second option is to make your own axle. Uh, with the first method you're obviously limited to what you can buy off the shelf um, but you've got less work to do. Um, in the second method you can customize especially the length of the axle um, to whatever you desire but you've got a bit more work to do. So once you've figured out the length of your axle, you're going to need a few parts. So the first thing you need is some um, square hollow section, uh, mild steel. Um, in our case, and in most people's cases, uh, this will be 50 by 50, that's millimetres by 5 millimetres thick. Uh, then you're going to need some axle stubs as here. You can buy these from your local trailer supplier. So there's a couple of ways um, you can do this. We're going to use uh, the shim method which is going to involve placing this axle stub inside this square section tube um, and packing the excess space out with spaces. So when using square hollow section that's been welded together you're going to end up with a welding seam um, internally as you can see down here. Now of course when you're using the shim method the seam is going to get in your way um, for shimming the stub into this hole so this seam needs to be removed the easiest way to remove the seam is to beg, borrow or steal um, an electric file. Um, it's like a miniature linisher um, and what it does this belt, uh, sanding belt rotates um, and it's also got good um, length on it that you can get quite a, quite a ways in um, which you're going to need for when you insert uh, the stubborn. Uh, this this tool here made this the job considerably easier. Um, another way of doing it is to use a file um, which is going to be hard work or maybe I thought you could use a cold chisel and bang that seam out again it's going to be tough. Try to get your hands on one of those. The plug weld hole will need to be drilled through the square hollow section approximately three quarters of the length of the way down um, the stub. And the stub will need to sit 25 millimeters from the square hollow section to the seal shoulder of the stub axle. So the next step is to fit the stub uh, into the square hollow section. Uh, it's good now if you've got a set of vernier calipers to measure the gap um, on either side of the stub. Um, you can do this by pushing the stub hard against um, say this wall over here uh, then measuring the gap on this side and dividing by two. Um, because it's a square that uh, measurement should be the same here and then you can work out the thickness that your shims need to be. Uh, in our case 0.9 um, steel sheet worked well. We cut that down to the appropriate sizes. I did this uh, starting off just with a plastic mallet so not to damage the stub to get them started working evenly around. Um, and then as they got progressively harder as they went in deeper sort of got an old piece of mould steel and whacked them with a hammer. Um, they did go pretty well I found on a couple of them they did at the end they didn't want to go any further 
so I had to very carefully with the angle grinder just nip them off that last section. Now these these shims go to um, the length of the stub. So once we got the shims sorted, uh, we clamped the the axle down to our trailer frame, as you can see detailed in the previous video. It's extremely important to ensure that the two stubs are parallel to each other. Uh, this will ensure that your wheels track straight to each other. So once we're happy that the stubs are all in the correct place, we just need to tack weld the stubs into place, as you can see down in this region. Then once tack welded, we need to fill the plug holes created earlier and then also we need an excellent penetrating weld around the stub as you can see in this illustration here. It's important to let the axles cool down naturally so they don't bend and warp so it's not a good idea to quench them into water or oil or anything of the like. So once the stubs have been welded in then it's time to attach to your trailer, trailer in our case via welding again measuring about eight times making sure it's right. An excellent trailer building resource I've used a lot in the design of design and build of our trailer is a New Zealand website named Trailer Source which I'll link down in the show notes.